Hello Dave is brought to you ad-free by my supporters on Patreon. Become a Patreon yourself and get your name listed as a supporter at the end of every video by following the link in the video description. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Hello Dave with Down to Earth Astronomy. So I know that I said that I probably wouldn't do a Hello Dave this week, but well, here we are. I uh, I just came home from vacation uh, today, so that's why I wasn't sure who was going to be able to make a video. But regardless, um, let's go and let's have a look. I, um, I've been quickly trying to get an overview of what's been uh, been going on uh, for the last week while I've been gone. Um, and the most noticeable thing I came across was the that Frontier has now uh, made a new new system for uh, applying for player minor factions. It, it seems to be a lot more automated now, and it's a lot more. Um, was a lot less janky than um, before they basically had a google form where you went in and then they would do everything manually but it seems that now it's uh, it's a lot more automated process um which is really needed because it seems that even though after the um the batch that was added where uh, our player faction terra x was introduced um they still had some problems i thought that would have been resolved after that because it seemed there's the solution they got um was that because they had such a huge backlog, they realized they couldn't do it all manually, so they wrote a script, basically a program that does it for them. Um, so I would assume they would be able to just run that program once a month and then get stuff out, but apparently they didn't do that. So it seemed like that software has now been implemented probably in this now more automated process that will um, uh, that will allow people hopefully to get their player factions uh, quicker. So that is all up and uh, and running now. So hopefully this time it should be um, a lot easier to get your your player faction introduced into the game. Um, so we don't have those extreme wait times as uh, as we've seen before, um, where players have been. I mean, we waited sev six seven months, I think, something like that. Maybe we're close to eight. I can't remember exactly. But I know there's been players who have been waiting for, for over a year. And I've spotted at least a few factions that was introduced in the same batch as our faction was. But um, but are completely dead. Uh, we have one faction close to us that was introduced in the same, um, in the same batch as us. But it's completely dead. No one's, uh, no one's working for that faction. It's right now it's only in their home system and has no influence at all. So... It seems that, that that's a dead faction. And that was dead, but pretty much just a faction that was dead on arrival. The people applied, they then waited, they waited, they waited, nothing happened, and then they lost interest, either completely in the game or in the whole uh, player faction thing. So I would assume that there is a lot of dead factions out there. And if you begin to look at the bubble, how crowded the area already is with, the, with factions, um, I would expect that at some point, especially now with an when it's easier than ever, hopefully, to get a player faction in the game. I expect that at some point, Frontier would have to go out and do some kind of cleanup. Um, but I would expect that to happen with the introduction of the squadrons in, uh, in the Q4 update. Um, but anyway, at least it's it's interesting to see that they're still actively developing on, um, on the player factions. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with them when Squadron is introduced in Q4. But anyway, there's a new system, so if you haven't applied for a player faction yet, now is uh, it's a good time to try and uh, test out the new systems. Or, of course, if you're interested in, in joining the uh, player faction run by the community around this channel, you can just follow the link for Discord and uh, everything will be uh, uh, will be coordinated from there. Um, other news that I found rather interesting um, was an announcement from ESA, the European Space Agency, that they apparently have found a rather large subsurface lake uh, close to the North Pole of Mars. A, I think it's somewhere around like 12 kilometers across, so it's not a small body of water. Um, of course, they haven't observed it directly or anything, they have uh, observed it by bouncing radars off it. Um, but, but that's rather interesting. There's over the last year or two, maybe three years, there's been more and more talk about people being pretty sure that there is still um, uh, plenty of water uh, on Mars. And they don't know at the moment how deep it is, so it could pretty just be a very shallow lake, but it could also turn out to be a very deep. 
Um, I mean, if 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 this is a, a, an old crater that's been filled up with water, then it could potentially be quite deep. Um, but this is actually rather interesting, especially with all the talk about um, missions to Mars. And and you would think that that finding water on Mars would make a exploration of Mars a lot easier. But I I'm not sure that's the case. I mean. We got the whole water recycling down pretty good. I mean, we, we have that thing covered. I mean, we have the International Space Station and they do tons of, uh, of water recycling. Um, so they need very little in terms of, uh, of additional water. So we pretty much got the whole water recycling done. Um, so needing a large body of water was never really a, I think, um, uh, was never really that necessary. I mean, if you were doing many, many years on the surface, you probably would need to resupply or you would have to have resupply missions come to you with water. But if they fail, then you would make sure that you would have enough to survive for the next resupply mission. So it, it makes it, of course, a lot easier, but I doubt it's just going to be like drill a hole and here's a well. Now we have fresh drinking water. It's not going to be like that. Um, first of all, the atmosphere wouldn't support that, but you could build a dome over it to, to take care of that part. Um, but problems, problems is that we don't know what kind of bacteria that might live in a lake like that. Um, what is there any kind of like, microorganisms living in there? Um, we, we don't know. And that makes things a lot more difficult. Uh, I mean, there could be bacteria that our immune system has probably never seen before because they have been evolved on a completely different planet. They might be similar to what we have on Earth, they might not. But that could potentially be very fatal for an, a mass exploration mission. So that's one concern if you begin to, uh, to do science with, with, uh, with water from, from, from such a lake. And that it could potentially be very dangerous to deal with this. Um, secondly, if we begin to send equipment down to take samples, we need to make sure that those equipments are very, very sterile. That there are nothing, that we don't carry any bacteria or anything on them with us from Earth, because that could potentially contaminate a already established ecosystem. And again, when we we, we don't know what's going to be in that water, um, so we don't want to contaminate it with something that could potentially be fatal to the that to an ecosystem that might already exist in uh, in a lake like that but but anyway that's um i just found it very 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 interesting and of course they they haven't like a hundred percent confirmed that they are a hundred percent sure but when they go out and make an announcement like this they are um they are pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they just put in a little, ah, oh, we're not 100% sure clause just in case something comes up. I mean, apparently they've been, uh, they've known about this for two or three years now and, and have been been trying to do several measurements. So it's not like just one radar bounce that turned, oh, this is the lake. They have they have tested this, they've been tested this quite extensively. But anyway, that was, I, th I thought that was, was a quite interesting, uh, quite interesting news to, uh, to surface this week. Um, I don't normally cover that much, <laughs> quote unquote, real life space news in these hello days, but let me know in the comment section if that's something you want to uh, you want me to, to include because I definitely think it would fit well with the with the concepts that I would cover a little bit of what's going on in Elite, a little bit of what's going on, maybe other games coming out or other interesting gaming related or YouTube related stuff cover a little bit of space news and do a little bit of news around the channel so if you're a bit bit of, a bit broad um kind of news thing but, but i think it could be interesting to try and pull in some real life space news and if that's something you find interesting and you want to see more of in hello dave then uh, let me know in the in the comment section below or drop the video a like or do something so that um so that i know that this is something i should probably try to to continue with and we'll see what happens next week then um yeah, so on the more on the channel side, uh, I had, of course, uh, a few pre-uploaded videos that's been going live over the last week. Um, while I was off on uh, on vacation, I had a very nice vacation. We went to, uh, to a, a, I call that a medium-sized town called Skagen, which is the northernmost town in uh, our city in Denmark. Um, 
weather was beautiful and uh, if you ever come to Denmark I would highly recommend that you go there especially if you like good food and uh, good wine it's a very good place to go but anyway lovely vacation and uh, and now I'm back and um, yeah I wrote here in my notes that I should keep this short so I'll probably move on now actually <laughs> so um, live streaming there will of course tomorrow at the usual spot seven o'clock in game time I will be live streaming both on YouTube and on Twitch um, and the tomorrow's topic is going to be yet another um, mining ship update. It's a project I've been working on quite a lot lately. Um, the gold digger, my mining corvette, is uh, complete again, quote unquote complete. Um, I've had it complete before, but then I figured out I want to do some changes. I've now done those changes, done some changes to the engines, and I did a little bit of changes to the weapon loadout and a little bit to the to the internals. So. Tomorrow on the live stream is going to be, we're going to do two things on the live stream. We're going to test two ships on this live stream and it's going to showcase two very different methods and very different tactics when it comes to mining. First, we're going to show the uh, the cutter, which is going to be the test flight of that with the new engineering upgrades. And this is going to show the, the method that I have been using so far, which is the slow and meticulous like go up, prospect a rock if it's good. If, uh, mine it if it's not move on to the next and mine that and prospect that so we're going to start by doing that as a not for too long but just to test out the um, the cutter to see if i'm happy with it and a lot of you guys have been asking for loadouts for this and um as i've also said when people have been asking there will be a dedicated video and there will be a coleolus link and a build guide and everything for it once it's done i just don't want to be um be spamming links around for a build that i'm not happy with myself just yet so um hopefully if everything goes well during the live stream tomorrow we will get that thing out i'll be happy with where it is and uh, then we can complete that and i can begin working on a build guide for it um but the other thing we're going to test uh or that i'm going to test on the live stream tomorrow is the speed mining method and it's a lot different um than what i've been doing so far i think it requires a lot more attention um so you don't run into a rock. The idea is basically get a small, fast ship, and instead of prospecting with the uh, with the prospector lead, but you prospect with your mining lasers, making mining lasers very useful due to the increased range. But I'm going to explain all that on the live stream tomorrow. So I really hope that you guys will uh, will drop by, by either on YouTube or on Twitch um, for that. Um, and yeah, as I said, tomorrow seven o'clock um, in game time, and that's of course seven p.m. in game time. So, um, I'm gonna call it here for today. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, give it a like down below and remember to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I will see you guys in space. <laughs>